All right. Good afternoon, all. I did a long uh, video yesterday. I'll try to do a shorter one today. Um, so this is Zoom. This is the recap of Zoom. So again, we start with the Dow Jones to understand everything. So we saw this meteoric rise over the last year, 50% uh, rise from 20,000 up to over 30,000. Um, and I don't believe that that's warranted. And you're seeing the indecision, right? This nice flag that should have popped up more instead fell hard back, did cruise up nicely, fell again. And now it's cruising up. It just finished cruising up at a, at a slower slant, at a lower uh, uh, slope. And then it popped up, and now it, it's it's behaving very very odd. So uh, if we look and and zoom in, um, this was the if we look at this first bump, that's pictured here, and I can kind of zoom in even more. So it it's this is what I call a rounding top, and a rounding top is usually something you know it predicts a fall. Uh, the initial rise, instead of it going up exponentially or flagging, it goes up and then peters out until it's almost flat, right? And so you'll see this is last week. This is um, the 15th, and it hit this hit hit up here and fell back. Hit up this resistance, fell back. Hit this resistance, fell back, and then finally it shot through. So um, this was this was last week. And so you can draw some resistance here, right? Uh, you could draw resistance here and here and here, but this is the latest resistance. I want you to see what happened um, as we follow throughout that, uh, throughout this week. See how it hit that resistance, shot up, reached some more resistance at 3200, crashed, right? Crashed back down on Friday, Monday, Tuesday, this nice oscillating pattern, not sure what it's going to do. Looks like it's going to fall down, but recovers. Um, and then uh, th people thought maybe it would come up. Nope, it fell down more, oh, but still faked, came, and then shot up. And this is the trend we just saw um, uh, over the last couple of days, this nice um, rise up. And what I want, you, and, and this is where we ended on Tuesday, and uh, I was predicting um, that today might fall. Well, this was a strong rise, so it may not fall perfectly all the way down, but I do feel like the Dow could easily fall down to 32,000, uh, and and so I was predicting a bearish day. Well, so it had come down to here, and then uh, you know during extended hours uh, it it rose up, right? Extended hours, there's movement. It doesn't show the movement on the Dow Jones index, but if you look at individual stocks. You can see that stocks most likely rose, especially the, the 30 Dow Jones stocks rose in, in the after hours. And it popped up. But where did it pop up to? It popped up to exactly the top from before, right? This was the top of yesterday, and it shot up right to that same place, then, then rejected. It ended Tuesday at this downward triangle. And I was predicting that this was going to be a downward triangle. This was a downtrend. Well, what did it do? Instead of it falling, it just popped up to the same level it hit before, um, and then fell. And look how it fell. It fell exactly, exactly to this resistance. This resistance that was predicted a week ago. Right? So that's technical analysis. Fundamentals can't do that. Fundamentals can't give you blow by blow, week by week, day by day, second by second. Only technical analysis can, and that's why I like trading technical analysis. So here we are. Uh, the stock uh, market uh, struggled, uh, but ultimately fell. And uh, uh, that is shown here, that that initial um, uh, downward triangle, I thought, just extended. I thought the downward triangle was coming um, uh, to here, and instead it extended out to here. So we could even draw this, and um, some old chartists have things called fan lines. And if you uh, were to draw some fan lines here, you would see. See, this is the first fan line, uh, and then this is the second fan line and all of that. So that's a normal thing when it kind of moves around. I'm going to erase these, though, for at least this one. Uh, and that's why we always have to trade both sides of any stock we're looking at. There was energy. You know, the stock moved. The, the Dow Jones moved a lot, right? It went up to... 3175 fell down to 30 uh, uh 33,000 so it moved 175 points that's that's a good movement but it moved very interestingly right it fell and then
crowned up and then ultimately fell and now is 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 falling so uh this is this is definitely uh bearish for tomorrow uh and but let's see how zoom did so let's go in and look at zoom so the dow jones was kind of like oscillating back and forth ending bearish right and what did zoom do so this is Zoom, right? Zoom was already bearish, already falling uh, on the on the large scale, and on the smaller scale, uh, it was also looking like it was falling. This is, you know, over the last uh, couple of weeks or so, it had fallen a ton, hit the bottom, and I was assuming it was going to continue to fall. Uh, so much so that if we zoom in, um, no pun intended. Um, I thought that uh, Tuesday here, this is where we were opening, I thought it would fall all the way down. But as you saw in my other video, I said, well, it could rise. And if it does, what does that mean? And I won't go into it, but this was our entry point if it would rise. And this was our uh, uh, entry point if it would fall. Now, look at this. I mean, this is crazy because I predicted this without doing a... And now it turns out there's not much trading in after hours, but I was thinking there might be a lot of trading in after hours. There wasn't, but I was saying, look, if this stock opens or falls below this line, short it, and it almost did, but it didn't, right? And it shot up to what exactly the 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 resistance I said to buy in at. So the play was okay, um, maybe short it, you know, if it starts falling. Uh, but be careful. Now, uh, this looks obvious to maybe have a small buy signal, but if you're looking at it really closely and it comes up and crowns the top, it begins to fall, a lot of people might, what, right? They might be shorting right here. That would not be the best call. Um, I was hoping for it, you know, I was, I think on my, my um, analysis was saying not to short it if it hits 320, but if it hits 320 and kind of falls down to maybe 315 or something, then go for it. But this didn't, right? It, it basically shot up to about uh, 317 and then never looked back and oscillated here. So this, if you're going to buy, uh, if you wanted to buy, this was the buy signal. So you bought somewhere in this vicinity and uh, then where do you stop? Well, the stop <coughs> should be down here, right? Now we didn't have to go back it, again because the after hours trading, we could have put the stop right here to really, uh, whoops, to really limit our loss. Um, we didn't have to, to, to put the stop so far down. Um, so that would only uh, be a, a, a four, uh, a, you know, a 1% a, a loss at this point. So great. Uh, and it didn't fall. And instead it rose. Okay. So I remember what I was saying. I said, hey, look, be careful. Now the Dow Jones was doing its wonky thing, going up and down, up and down. Nothing was shooting up. So the fact that this was shooting up was kind of weird. But hey, you bought it. Awesome came back down so at this point once it shot up past your entry point that's when you want to maybe look at um, moving up your stop so that you don't lose money right as soon as you can you want to move your stop up so that you don't lose money so you know maybe you stopped out that would have been too early but definitely you know by 7 30 7 15 7 30 that's a great time to be deciding what to do next you'd move your stop luckily it didn't dip down here it could have but it shot up to 324 now that might not seem like a lot but um, that, if you bought in at 320 and sold at 324, that's a 1% gain. And remember, um, the uh, options uh, I checked on it uh, are trading at 30 times. Um, uh, so that means a 1% gain is what? 30% gain. So you could have captured 30% here. It came up and maybe it fell down, came up again, kind of struggled, struggled. Maybe you sold right here, right? That would have been a great play. But if you didn't, you wanted to wait, hold on, fine. Now it's falling, you're going, uh-oh, maybe I'll have to get out. I would have probably lowered my getting out spot to maybe here, just because that was the low earlier in the day. Uh, you know, and I would have lost a little bit, but given it some little wiggle room. Then it shot up again, right? And what did it do? A perfect double top. Well, you know what double top means? It's going to fall. Uh, and, and so um, this is definitely, you know, uh, another time to sell. Let's say you don't, it falls again. Again, if you can let it ride for this many hours, I wouldn't get out now. You know, I would lower the stop a little bit and let it go. And then it proceeds to go stagnant. Now, this is what happens, right? The, when you trade uh, the first hour and a half, uh, you know, is, is good. After that, everyone goes to lunch and, and trading kind of ceases. So not much happened for the next few hours. But then all of a sudden it started to go up. 
and it hit all the way up past the current highs, all the way up to 326. That's very high. Look at that. Um, that stock is is now um, uh, um, higher than it had been over the last few days. It really was going up. Awesome. And then it struggled. And so again, when it struggled, that's a time you might want to to get out. Any of these spots, you would get out at and and get a 30% gain. Remember, on a stock that shouldn't be going up, on a with a Dow Jones struggling and everything. So you could have made money had you followed my prediction of wanting to trade Zoom that day because darn it, you just wanted to. But if you didn't, you would have still been okay, right? You, there's no need to move your stop up any higher. Um, uh, and, you know, the goal is just get out. So now, now you're seeing something that's not good. Because all those gains that took how many hours? Two hours, two and a half hours to get up there, all fell in like less than an hour, right? In like 30 minutes it fell. That's not a good sign when it takes so long to just barely creep up and then it crashes. Uh, luckily it didn't crash all the way and you didn't lose all your profits. It went up again. Again, this would be a time to take your profits, you know, be happy about it. But let's say you didn't, then you did get this chance to perhaps get an, uh, out here. Now this is again another double top. This is not a good sign. Double top here, falls. Double top here, what do you think it's going to do? A perfect opportunity. You had almost 15, 20 minutes to take your, your earnings and be done with it. Uh, if you chose not to, you're playing with fire at this point. If you didn't get out there, then, you know, here's the thing with options, is that options have expirations. And if you want 30 times your, um, your, your, your money, if you want to leverage your money 30 times, you've got to get an option that expires within a week. They had an option you could, that expired in one day, like it expires tomorrow. Uh, I wouldn't suggest that, but I'd get the one that expired, you know, in nine days or whatever, 16 days. Uh, but every day that you leave it in, the option tanks. Why? Because once it expires, it's worthless. Right, let me explain that again. If you buy an option, say you put in $10,000 for buying options, and if it expires, you lost all 10000 Even if your stock shot up, doesn't matter. It's, it's a useless ticket. It's like a winning number that was only good for one day, and then the next day you get your, your lottery. Sorry, you know that's, that's next week's numbers. That doesn't count anymore. So you, uh, every day that gets closer and closer to your expiration, your ticket becomes less and less valuable. And so trust me, you never ever want to stay in an options trade overnight. Always exit. You can always get in the following morning. And if you miss an opportunity, guess what? There'll be a million more. Um, so at 1230, the, you know, stocks close at one. I mean, you, you had to take your gains. Um, and that's what I suggested. And so now let's see where we're at for tomorrow. So, uh, same thing, right? Same exact plan. Um, if we uh, erase these guys here, um, we see that, uh, again, there's a possibility that it could shoot up. And if it shoots up to 326, eh, that's a possible buy opportunity. But remember now, the Dow Jones is almost definitely on the way down. In fact, I think it fell in after hours we were looking at. So I would be very hesitant here, but you don't know, right? Just because 30 stocks go up doesn't mean the whole market moves, even though those 30 stocks tend to predict. And if you look here, if it shots, shoots up and it shoots up again, it has some room, right? Where's the next resistance? There's not much resistance here, here. The next resistance is right around here or here, right? That's like three, what is that? You know, 346, um, so 346 or so? That's, that's, that's some money, right? So if, if you, if you bought, you know, at 326, it shoots up to 346, you made money. And there's not a lot, you know, there's a little bit of resistance here, sure, at 330. Um, you know, but not not a ton, you know. Uh, if it shoots up, it could really go up. Um, so on a micro level, you could make money if this thing shoots up, but it should fall. It's poised to fall. Look at that. We've got this nice downward pattern here. We can, um, you know, this... this uh, downward triangle is forming even more so here you know no matter how you draw it like this thing wants to go down and uh, I predict it will go down and so I would say um, the, the buy signal from yesterday becomes the short signal for today so see how it shoots up and then hits that resistance and hits that resistance comes up hits that resistance hits that 320 is a perfect time to short and why? Because if you short it, where would be the stop? Where would be the cover? 326. So uh, it, it, that is a 2% loss, which is too much, but, you know, it's better than nothing. Um, you could probably lower it a little bit more, but, you know, there is some volatility here. So, so you know, uh, if it 
if, if you get in at 320 and it kind of slowly peters up barely and then kind of you know is struggling um, then you know don't be afraid to let it sit a little bit but honestly if it is 320 and it doesn't fall through then you probably do want to stop out and you can always get back in you know if it opens up and you short it and it shoots up just get out right you could get out a, a nice safety place to get out would be somewhere around here right see there's some resistance here resistance here uh, resistance here and so that now you're limiting yourself to a nice one percent loss uh, which is not times 30 it doesn't work that way uh, luckily but you would you would take maybe 10 20 percent loss on this if it went the wrong way and then let's say it comes back down and it comes down with a vengeance and it looks like it crashes through 320 then you could short it 320 again and probably be fine where would it fall to well, guess what the same resistance uh, that your entry point was before right uh, this is a wonderful um, place to stop out at uh, at around 310 or thereabouts uh, and so what would that be that would be a 20 point gain so we're looking at a three you know to five point loss for a 10 um, to 15 or 20 point gain so those numbers are great you're right about 30 or 40 percent of the time and uh, you're still making money off this trade so the play tomorrow is to short it at 320, let it fall all the way down to 310. Uh, if all you're investing is about a thousand bucks or two thousand bucks buying one contract, then uh, get out here. If you're buying ten thousand dollars worth, maybe ten contracts, maybe sell half here, uh, and then see if it keeps falling. At 305, watch it. But if it falls, it could fall for days, right? And so we come looking at this stock, uh, it could fall easily down to 275 that would be a, a huge drop there's nothing here there's nothing preventing a huge drop look there's no there's no resistance here uh, being shown between 320 all the way down to 280 there's nothing here it's just going down to, there's nothing there's no bumps or anything so if this breaks down from 305 it could fall easily down to this 280 and then now you're making uh, a ton of money right that's a a 10% drop which would give you 300% returns probably not 300% but at least a hundred uh, percent return on your money you could double your money tomorrow alright guys hopefully this helps take care